This is a NAE's Interlibrary Loan System training video. In this video, we will explain how to find a particular interlibrary loan request in the NAE's system. Today we will be working as the Lilac Public Library. You'll notice that I am already logged in as the ILL user for the Lilac Public Library. It is occasionally necessary to, to find an interlibrary loan request um, either by its number or by its title or by some other method. We'll explain here a few options that are available to you to track down a particular request when you need to do so. The most straightforward way to do it is to search by transaction number. To do that, we go to the staff dashboard and from there, under the Interlibrary Loan Administration menu, I need to know whether I was the borrower or the lender in the transaction that I am looking for in order to find it through this method. So I know that the Lilac Public Library was a borrower in, I believe, transaction number 6652. So I just put that in the box here that pops up under Request Number, and I hit Enter and it brings up the transaction for me. Now from here I am actually in the details screen of this transaction so I can take action on it if I need to do so at this point. Um, it is currently in a received status so from here I would be able to return it if I wish to do so. I could ask for a renewal or I could notify the library that it has been lost. If I have additional, and once I've made any changes, I need to click the Submit button in order to make them take effect. I also can just go back and search for another transaction. The Back button takes me right back here to the borrower's request number search so I can find another transaction. But what happens if I don't have the number of the transaction that I want? So I have some additional options. Also in the staff dashboard, under Interlibrary Loan Administration, I have a couple of additional choices. When I am the borrower, I can do a title browse or a patron browse. Now in practice, these really are going to function the same way because you get mostly the same information. So let's look at the title browse screen here. So I click that and it brings up not a search window, but a browse list. So this is all of the transactions that are currently uh, visible to me as the Lilac Public Library, where the Lilac Public Library is the borrower. So the information that's available to me here is the title, the request number, the library, the name of the author of the item, the patron's name, because remember I am the borrower, so these are my patrons anyway, so I already know who they are, so I can see their names here, um, and then the status of the transaction. Any of these can be sorted using the little up arrows in the label, so if I sort by status, I can see that this is an accepted renewal, I have a bunch that are complete, I have a bunch that are expired, um, I have a bunch that are not, a couple that are not received, and some pendings. I can also, like with any other um, one of these table sorter displays, select specific columns or hide specific columns. There's not a lot of columns available here. Um, so it's probably best to just have them all show, but if you want to hide one for some reason, you can, or if you find that one you thought would be there isn't there, because perhaps one of your colleagues who uses the same login has changed it, you can find the column again using this little gear icon to um, add or remove columns from your display. Now, if you do have a lot of transactions and it is not practical to sort through them, as you'll see here, I have only 25 transactions, uh, I'm sorry, I have 31 transactions. I have 31 transactions, apparently. I can change how many I will see with this number, and then I see all 31 of my 31 transactions. Um, but if I want to, if I have a lot and I want to actually sort for them or browse for them, I need to do that by typing into the title sorter the beginning of the string. It will overlook um, leading articles. So just find a gentleman in Moscow. I st 
start typing in gentleman, it will ignore the letter A. To go back and get the rest of my things back, I just remove whatever's in my sorter. The same is true with your library um, searching. It will bring up things, but it's going to be by code because the code is what appears first. So that is how you can find something by title. I had mentioned before that you can also go by patron. When we do that, however, we have exactly the same uh, information that we had before, except we have fewer uh, columns. So there isn't really a whole lot of point to using the patron sorter um, or the patron browse functionality because it gives you the same things you could already see in the title browse, but less. So let's go back for a moment to the staff dashboard. So that was what we saw as the title. If, uh, I'm sorry, as the borrower. If we are the lender, we have the same options. We can browse by title. We can search by request number. If I go to title browse where I am the lender, the major difference that you should notice here is there is no patron information. I have titles, I have request numbers, I have a library, and this is the library that is lending it, um, to which I am lending. And then the author name and the status of the request. Just as before, I can sort, I can choose to display or not display specific columns, I can put in a number or any piece of data to bring up just those things, essentially to filter my list until I find what it is I want. From this display, as with the ones on the other side, um, if you click on the title, which is a link, it will take you to the full record display from which you can take action on this transaction. But what happens if, let's going back to the request manager, what happens if you have a transaction, say it's a transaction where you were the borrower, and you have a number, perhaps in your files or on a random scrap of paper that you are trying to figure out why you still have this scrap of paper. Maybe I'm the only one that happens to, but anyway, you have a number. You search for the number. It says nothing. But you're pretty sure this was a transaction that you had something to do with, so you need to figure out what happened to it. So your transaction information does remain in uh, the system, actively available to find for 365 days. Now, if you delete a transaction, which you can do, that is one of your transaction options uh, from some screens, primarily on um, Transactions that are essentially finished, things that have expired, are in retry, or are incomplete, because while retry is not a finished status, sometimes you want to abandon things from there. So you can delete the transactions if you feel that it is important to do so. They will go away in that case, but the record of them does not entirely disappear. There is still, um, for I think, I believe it's for two years. Still some information that can be found about those transactions even if they have been deleted. So I will show you now how you can find a transaction. I'm going to go back and just double check that my search was correct. I think that transaction 1453 is a transaction for my library, but nothing comes up. So the way to find this transaction hopefully is to go through the report functionality and look at the data that is sort of archived in the system. To do that, we're going to go to the staff dashboard again. There is, in fact, and we'll go to the statistics menu. There is an entire video that just covers the use of statistics, how to find them, how to sort them, how to work with them. So I'm not going to go through a lot of detail on this. Um, if you want to see how to do um, statistics, pull statistical reports, I refer you to that other video um, on using statistics. But to track down a transaction that you that is not coming up in the regular searching mechanism. We go to the activity and request reports under the statistics menu in the system. Now from here I can pull in all kinds of reports. The one that I want here is 
either a request records or a lender response record, depending on where I think I was involved in the transaction. So request records are things that I asked to borrow. Lender response records are things that someone asked me to lend them. So the transaction that I was trying to find, number 1453, I believe I was the borrower. So I'm going to choose request records. I'm not sure exactly when it was, so I'm going to leave the full year of information here. So it defaults to being back in January and then through today. I have to choose a format for my report as it says right here on these trend, on these report options. Excel only is the only way to do this. So I'm going to choose Excel as my format. Request records. I want to display each site even if the statistics are zero because I don't know why I couldn't find this transaction. So I want to see as much data as I possibly can. Once I've made my choices to create my report, I click Submit. And my browser, and I'm using a Firefox browser, so it behaves uh, the way that I've configured it to do. And this will vary a little bit depending on the um, browser that you are using. But in Firefox, um, it's going to want to either open with or save something. I'm going to open it with Microsoft Excel so I can look at it. And we'll bring up my... Excel, which I didn't have open, so it takes me a second. It will bring it up in a protected view. You can enable editing, which will give you a little more flexibility in how you can work with the report. And then from here, I can use the functionalities of Excel to find what I want. So I'm going to choose the Request ID column, go to Find and Select, and ask to find transaction 1453. And there it is. So I can close this. It's on line 17 of my display here. And I can see from this that I had a transaction here. It was a gentleman in Moscow. It ended up, uh, it was created by the system. It ended up as a pickup for me. Request type loan article type. So there's lots of data here. Let me scroll way over. It expired. And it apparently expired on the 9th on um the 9th of November. So it was not in the transactions when I searched for them, which tells me, even though there's nothing that explicitly says so, it tells me the fact that it is showing here it was expired, it was deleted. So someone in my library using my login, one of my logins has deleted this request for whatever reason. Um, but I can still see here that I had tried to borrow it and it, it expired unfilled. So I can go back now into the Lilac Public Library tr login for the ILL system and return to activity and request reports. And I can now also see my lender information. So something I've lent to someone that I'm trying to track down. I do the same thing I did before. I choose the date range. And let's say I know I'm more certain about this one. I know this was something that happened in November. I'm going to say I want Excel, lender response, display each site, and click submit to create the report. And then in this case, instead of it just going immediately to displaying in Excel, it's wanting me to download the data. So if this button pops up, you need to click it to make the other box show. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so we're going to say OK to open the report with Excel. Um, my browser is concerned that I'm doing something unsafe here. So I'm going to, I'm pretty sure it's OK though. So I'm going to say yes. I want to open it even though the browser is a little worried. And this is now showing me the Excel report for the things that the Lilac Public Library has been a lender on in the month of November. So I can see here, for example, that mud lumps was one of the things that I, someone asked me to lend it. I have shipped it. I have one that I didn't supply. I can see the dates. So this provides me some information about my transactions. Um, 
even if those numbers may not have come up, it does appear from this report that all of these would in fact probably be there. The will not supply could have been deleted, um, but the rest of them were shipped, so they are probably all still available to search from. But if you have a lot of these transactions, you can use this report to save the data. Notice here, because I am the lender in, um, in this transaction, I am not able to see anything about any patron information. There's nothing here that tells me who these things were for. They just tell me because they were not my patrons. These are things I lent to other libraries. So there you have an overview of the various ways you can track down a particular request number in the NAES Interlibrary Loan System. If you have questions about doing this, please contact the NAES Help Desk at 603-271-2141 or send us an email at the address on your screen. Thank you for watching.